Maxwell Chikambutso drops a silent bombshell. The world wasn't ready for this. A man once dismissed as a dreamer, even a fraud by some, had just done the unthinkable. Maxwell Chikambutso had dropped a bombshell so revolutionary, so perfectly timed, that it sent shockwaves across every major tech company on Earth. What did he reveal? A device that challenges the entire foundation of how we understand energy, and once again, proves that Africa's genius doesn't need validation from the West to change the world. The silence before the storm. For weeks, whispers had circulated. Talk of a final test inside the Set Technologies compound in Harare. The company had been strangely quiet. No new interviews, no demonstrations, nothing. But deep inside that facility, Maxwell was preparing something big, something he'd been perfecting for over a decade a prototype that could finally silence every critic who ever says inventions were impossible. And then it happened. A live video quietly appeared on Seth's private channel. No press, no hype, just a small group of engineers standing before a matte black device about the size of a briefcase. They turned it on, and in that moment, everything changed. The device that shouldn't exist, as a machine powered up, emitted no sound, no heat, no vibration. Yet, on the monitors behind it, massive power readings began to spike. The engineers connected multiple devices, fans, lights, even an EV battery system. All of them came to life, running flawlessly. But here's the twist. There was no visible power source. No cables. No generators. No fuel. This was wireless, self-sustaining energy, harnessed directly from ambient radio frequencies in the air. For years, Maxwell had claimed this was possible. And for years, the world laughed. But now there was proof. Global shockwaves. Within hours, the footage spread like wildfire. Scientists around the globe scrambled to explain it. Was it magnetic resonance? Quantum induction? A hoax? But then came the clincher. An independent energy auditor from South Africa verified the test results. The readings were real. The output consistent. And the most shocking part, the system remained active long after being disconnected from any external source. That's when international agencies started paying attention. Emails from Silicon Valley, calls from China, interest from Dubai. Everyone wanted to know, has Maxwell just cracked infinite energy? Maxwell's message to the world. A day later, Maxwell finally broke his silence. Standing in front of his self-powered prototype, he said, this technology was never meant to make me rich. It was meant to make humanity free. The statement hit harder than the invention itself. Because this wasn't just an engineering achievement. It was a declaration of independence. Energy independence. Technological independence. African independence. The world reacts. The reactions were explosive. In the U.S., analysts called it the biggest threat to the global energy economy. European automakers warned it could collapse the EV market overnight. And in Africa, something else happened. For the first time, inventors, students, and engineers from across the continent began reaching out to set technologies, offering to collaborate, not compete. It wasn't just about power anymore. It was about unity, innovation, and proving that the next global revolution might just start in Africa. The hidden struggle begins. The moment the video went viral... Powerful forces began to move behind closed doors. In private boardrooms and encrypted calls, energy magnates, defense contractors, and political strategists gathered in urgent meetings. Maxwell's invention wasn't just new tech. It was a threat. If a small African startup could produce self-sustaining energy from the air itself, then oil, gas, lithium, even nuclear, all of it could become obsolete overnight. Within 24 hours, offers began flooding in, some from governments wanting to partner, others from private entities that didn't want the technology to ever see the light of day. But Maxwell wasn't answering anyone. He had gone completely silent. Set Technologies was now a fortress, armed guards, restricted access, and encrypted communications. Troy S. Burkina Faso delegation had already landed in Harare, reportedly offering full military protection for Maxwell and his team. Because they knew... What was coming next would not be a negotiation. The pressure from the West. In Washington, a classified memo circulated through the Department of Energy. 
It warned, if verified, CES device could destabilize global energy markets within 36 months. Meanwhile, European media began questioning the authenticity of the video. Major networks labeled it clever editing or pseudoscience. But scientists who examined the footage privately admitted they couldn't find any trace of fraud. Behind the scenes, however, something darker was brewing. A consortium of major oil companies reportedly formed a task force to evaluate and contain emerging non-commercialized technologies. Translation, find out what Maxwell had and stop it, the African response. But Africa was not backing down. Traore, along with several African presidents, held a joint summit in Addis Ababa. The agenda, create a Pan-African Innovation Shield, a cooperative protection and funding program for homegrown technologies that challenge global monopolies. When Maxwell's name was mentioned, the hall erupted in applause. For the first time, it felt like Africa was protecting its own genius. In a leaked statement, Traore was heard saying, if the world won't let us sell our resources, we will sell our ideas. That line alone trended across the continent for days. Meanwhile, Back in Harare, Maxwell's lab began expanding rapidly. Engineers worked around the clock, refining the device, scaling its power output, and running continuous live tests. But what they discovered next was even more shocking. The discovery they didn't expect. During one of the tests, the team noticed a strange pattern. The radio power device wasn't just pulling energy from existing radio waves. It seemed to be tapping into a deeper, low-frequency field that spanned across regions, almost like an invisible global network of ambient power. Maxwell stared at the reading for minutes, speechless. The numbers didn't make sense, unless the planet itself was acting like a massive energy reservoir. They had stumbled upon something far greater than free electricity. This wasn't just a device. It was an interface between humanity and Earth's untapped electromagnetic field. It perfected... It could power not just cars or homes, but entire cities. And Maxwell knew, if this data ever leaked, every intelligence agency on Earth would want it. So he did something no one expected. He encrypted the technology's core formula, divided it into seven fragments, and sent each fragment to seven different countries in Africa. The beginning of something bigger. As weeks pass, the tension around set technologies intensified. Spy satellites hovered over Harare. Corporate executives flew, and under false pretenses. And deep in the night, black vans were spotted circling the Seth compound. But through it all, Maxwell remained calm. He once said in an old interview, You can stop a man, but you can't stop an idea whose time has come. That time had finally arrived. The Seven Signals. It began quietly. Across seven African nations, strange signals started pulsing in the radio spectrum. Faint, rhythmic, almost like a heartbeat. No one understood what they were. At first, local broadcasters thought it was interference. Then satellite monitoring stations began picking them up too. Each signal was unique, but together they formed a pattern. Hidden within those radio waves were Maxwell's seven encrypted fragments, each one containing a portion of the self-sustaining energy interface algorithm. One piece in Ghana, another in Nigeria one deep within the Congolese rainforest, another embedded in South Africa's satellite grid, and so on, seven nations, seven keys, one code. Once synchronized, these signals could unlock the core of Maxwell's technology and create a unified Pan-African power field, a real-time energy web connecting the entire continent. And then, the impossible happened, the power surge. At exactly 3.14 a.m., one of the fragments stationed in Ghana's Volta region, synced itself with another in Nigeria. In an instant, both regions experienced a massive spike in ambient voltage. Streetlights that had been off for years flickered back to life. Solar panels surged with unexpected current. Even though it was midnight, words spread like wildfire. Engineers, scientists, and even villagers reported seeing blue arcs of light dance across antennas and radio towers. Power from nowhere... One witness called it. By dawn, for fragments were active. Maxwell and his team were monitoring everything from Harare, watching energy readings climb to unprecedented levels. The world had never seen anything like it. The continent wasn't just using energy anymore, it was producing it collectively, wirelessly, endlessly. 
And that's when the international networks finally broke their silence. The world reacts. News anchors around the world were stunned. Unexplained energy phenomena across Africa flashed on every screen. The Pentagon labeled it an electromagnetic anomaly. China dispatched its top scientists to study the wave frequencies. European markets began crashing overnight as energy stocks plummeted. It was no longer a rumor. Maxwell's technology was real, and it was spreading. But with global recognition came global resistance. Encrypted messages intercepted by set technologies revealed that multiple Western agencies were already preparing containment operations. They feared that if the network went fully online, global energy dominance would shift permanently away from the West. The silent war. Drones began appearing near the perimeter of Seth's Harare compound. Communications were jammed. Some of the local engineers reported cyber attacks, trying to corrupt the control servers. But Maxwell was prepared. He activated Project Horizon, a failsafe designed to decentralize the energy grid even further. Each time one server went offline, another would automatically spin up in a different African city. The attackers couldn't stop it. Every attempt to disrupt the system only made it spread faster, like energy itself was defending its freedom. By now, all seven fragments were glowing on Maxwell's main console. The map of Africa shimmered with golden threads connecting each nation, a network born not from wires, but from the very air itself. The birth of the African energy web had begun the day the lights turned on. That night, people across Africa witnessed something they would tell their children about for generations. Cities that had known darkness for decades suddenly lit up. Villages that never had electricity saw their homes glow softly under the moonlight. And in the sky, faint auroras of green and gold shimmered over the continent, a visible manifestation of the new energy field. No one could explain it scientifically yet, but everyone felt it. The air seemed charged, alive, humming with quiet power. And in that moment, it wasn't just electricity, it was liberation. Traore appeared on national television, declaring, Tonight, Africa stands on its own light. The world watched in disbelief. But while Africa celebrated, the world's most powerful nations were preparing something drastic, something that could end as miracle before it changed everything forever. The global counterstrike. It started at midnight. A series of silent orbital maneuvers, satellites shifting position above Africa's atmosphere. They weren't broadcasting news or navigation data. They were targeting frequencies. The Western coalition called it Operation Eclipse. Their goal was simple shut down the African energy web before it expanded beyond control. Within minutes, the sky above Zimbabwe flickered with strange static ripples. Communications dropped. The airwaves, once alive with Maxwell's transmission, began to distort under a storm of interference. In Harare's command center, Maxwell stood silently in front of the console, his eyes locked on a fluctuating signal map. They're trying to drown us, whispered one engineer. Maxwell didn't move. He simply said, then we amplify. The new era. Months passed. The African energy web stabilized, expanding beyond the continent's borders. Countries that once ignored Maxwell's calls were now seeking partnerships. But he refused to sell the technology outright. Instead, he created the African Energy Consortium, ensuring that the system remained open source, community-driven, and untouchable by corporate monopolies. The radio-powered systems evolved, cars, drones, even aircraft operating entirely on ambient frequency energy. Africa had not just entered the future, it defined it. As one global analyst wrote, The 20th century was powered by oil. The 21st was powered by data. The 22nd will be powered by Africa. And in Harare, as night fell once again, Maxwell gazed over the illuminated skyline. Cities pulsing softly with self-sustaining light. He whispered, almost to himself, We didn't just build a machine, we built freedom. Then he turned off his radio, smiling as the signal carried on without him, echoing through the air, across borders, into forever.